Hey guys, today we're going to talk about hyperaldosteronism, which we can divide into the primary, also known as Kahn syndrome, or secondary. But before we get into that, let's just talk about a normal patient with a low blood pressure. When someone has low blood pressure, we have these baroreceptors located in the afferent arterioles of the kidney. They're located right here. And they're going to sense this low, low blood pressure. Once they do, they're going to secrete these enzymes called renin. Now what renin does is that it converts angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. And angiotensin 1 then travels to the lung and by using this enzyme called ACE, which stands for angiotensin converting enzyme, it gets converted to angiotensin 2. Now angiotensin 2 goes to the adrenal gland and it stimulates production of aldosterone. Now once aldosterone is made, it's going to travel to distal convoluted tubules and the collecting ducts and it's going to work on two different types of cells. It's going to work on the principal cells and alpha intraclated cells. So let's imagine this is our aldosterone binding to its receptors. And once it binds to these receptors, it's going to activate these pumps in these cells. Now in principal cells, we are going to reabsorb sodium and water always follows sodium and at the same time we're going to exchange that sodium with potassium so we're going to be secreting potassium in the lumen of the nephron and on the alpha intraclated cells we're going to secrete hydrogen ions into the lumen so now what's going to happen is the sodium and water reabsorption will lead to increase of blood pressure. So our initial low blood pressure will now become normal. And it's important to know that once blood pressure is back to normal, this whole system gets shut down and it will not go beyond this point because we're talking about a normal person. Let's now talk about primary or con syndrome first. When we're saying primary, what we mean is that the tumor is located at the site where the actual hormone is being made and secreted. There is no other forces that are influencing it to do so. So the tumor is located here in the adrenal gland and it's making loss of aldosterone. Now it could be on both adrenal glands or just on one. So we can say primary is because of a unilateral or bilateral tumors. So since the tumor is here, we're going to be making lots and lots of aldosterone. Now this aldosterone is going to be doing its job, which is to reabsorb sodium and water and excrete potassium and hydrogen. So we're going to have hypernatremia, hypertension due to sodium and water reabsorption. Uh, we're also going to have hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis. Uh, the reason for hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis is that we are losing potassium and hydrogen ions which are being excreted in the urine. Now what's really important here that we should understand is that since this is due to a tumor um, and it's a primary tumor, the increase of aldosterone is going to have a negative feedback on production of renin. So we're going to be inhibiting renin. So in, this, in the case of a primary hyperaldosteronism, aldosterone is going to be high but renin is going to be low. Now, in the secondary, we're not talking about a tumor. It's another cause that, that is making the adrenal gland to produce lots of aldosterone. Now, some of those secondary causes are renal artery stenosis. So if we have a vasoconstriction here, there's going to be less blood getting to the kidneys. Now, the kidney is going to think there's low blood pressure, which might not be the case, but it's going to secrete lots of renin. And this renin is going to lead to increased aldosterone production. So we're going to have increased renin due to the secondary cause and renin is going to lead to increased aldosterone. Some other causes for secondary hyperaldosteronism are congestive heart failure. Now if the heart is failing at pumping out blood, this means that there's going to be less blood 
get into the kidney. Kidney is going to think low blood pressure. So again, it's going to secrete lots of renin, which is going to lead to increased allosterone production. Another reason could be due to cirrhosis and also nephrotic syndromes. The reason for these two is that if we have cirrhosis or we have nephrotic syndrome, we're going to lose a lot of proteins especially albumin. In cirrhosis, we're not going to make any protein. In nephrotic, we're getting rid of so much protein. So low serum protein concentration will eventually lead to decreased colloid osmotic pressure, which is going to lead to uh, intravascular volume depletion. Now this is going to make the kidneys think there's low blood pressure again. So they're going to start secreting lots of renin, leading to increased aldosterone production. So the lab values is going to be exactly the same as primary. It's going to be the same thing. We're going to have increased serum sodium. We're going to have hypertension. We're going to have decreased serum potassium. And we're going to have metabolic alkalosis. So the only way really to differentiate between primary and secondary is going to be these two. In primary, we're going to have increased aldosterone, and the, the negative feedback is going to cause decrease in renin. In secondary, we're going to have increased renin production, which is going to lead to eventually aldosterone production. So both of these are going to be high in the secondary cause. So our best initial test is to measure the ratio of renin to aldosterone. If renin is high, then it's going to be secondary. If renin is low, then it's going to be primary. And if we're still not sure, we can do the most accurate test, which is to sample the venous blood draining the adrenal glands, which will show high aldosterone levels. Now, the next thing is how would we treat these patients? If it's a unilateral tumor, we can simply remove the tumor by laparoscopy, and the patient will do just fine since his other adrenal gland will compensate. And if we have a bilateral tumor or a secondary cause, we can use spironolactone, which is an aldosterone antagonist that will interfere with binding of aldosterone to its receptors, therefore preventing its actions. We can also use it on patients with unilateral tumors who don't want to do laparoscopy. Thank you guys for watching this lecture. Please make sure to subscribe, rate, and comment. You can also visit our website at medical-institution.com for many more lectures. I wish you guys all the best.